guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my July wrap up. So I am going to be reviewing all of the 14 books that I read in July. Most are extreme horror. We got a couple thrillers. We got a, just a bunch of random books. Okay, some general horror. I have one nonfiction. So uh, if you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. First of all, this is going to be very unhinged. Second of all, um, how I do my wrap ups, I start with the books that I like the least and then I work my way up to the books I like the most. So in typical Megan fashion, I start with rants and then we end on raves. Before we get started, I have some exciting news. I have merch, yes. This started as a joke. <laughs> One of you guys, I think, commented in my last wrap up and said like, when are we getting Reading with Meg merch? And I was like, oh my god, that's hilarious. Uh, and then I take all my jokes too far, you guys know this. And I was like, hey, who can do graphic design and wants to help me out? And my good friend Amy from Nonfiction Feminist, I will leave her channel linked down below. I absolutely love her. She was like, I'll make some designs for you. So she made some designs for me. We collaborated. I put them on merch. Again, just, you know, taking my jokes too far. My good friend Judith Sonnet, who I love, was like, I need reading with Meg merch. Okay, when she tells me to do something, of course I do it. So then uh, we put the designs on some merch. And then I was like, okay, well, I don't think people want things with my face on it. <laughs> I don't want things with my face on it but then I was like I am just gonna come up with some like other little designs so I'm gonna show you um there are some things that didn't make it to me yet because of like issues with shipping which it's all it's all good now but I like didn't know how to work the website when I first signed up so anyways um I have this shirt here that Amy designed. This one is the, um, are you sure about that? With the little mummy mug. I think this was from my last wrap up, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's one that says, you are all psychos. I have that one. And if you don't want a shirt, they're on shirts, sweatshirts, and I have mugs as well, which is perfect because I'm always drinking out of a fucking mug. Why am I already cursing? Um, is this auto-focusing? I'm always drinking out of a mug. So I feel like this is perfect. And I absolutely love this. I've actually been drinking out of this mug like all the time. <laughs> and it's weird because it's it's my face. Okay, so I have that, okay? Then I have something else very exciting that I've been wearing like every day. And I made this one and it says introverted but willing to discuss extreme horror. Once again, you can get them on sweatshirts, shirts, and I have a mug for this one as well, different colors, etc., etc. It goes up to 5XL, and I'm obsessed. It's cozy, I'm obsessed. I've been wearing it like every day while I'm working because it's always freaking freezing in here. So yeah, and then I have a shirt that says Hot Girls Read Extreme Horror because duh. And I think that's it for now. So that will be all linked in the description box down below, as well as I'm trying to get it linked up to my YouTube channel. So there should be some kind of like banner or something that pops up if it's working properly. So yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Amy, for helping me. And uh, if you buy something, all the money is going towards my surgery. Oh, all right, let's start with the book that I liked the least this month. I got a lot to say. All right, it's a two star book. Uh, it two stars might be generous, but that is Cackle by Rachel Harrison. Where do I even begin? So you guys know I don't have the best track record when it comes to Rachel Harrison. Like I'm not a Rachel Harrison girly. I just three strikes and you're out. This was the third fucking strike for me. So this book. We're following this girl, Annie, and she is like, she just moved to a new town. She's going through like a breakup. I think she's like 30 and she's kind of trying to start her life all over. And she meets this woman that she becomes good friends with. And the woman may or not, may not, may or may not, I can't speak. Um, and the woman may or may not be a witch. 
that's the whole book. That's literally the whole book. Boring. Boring. This book is about nothing. It's about like, oh, friendship. Oh, whatever. Okay. Her books just feel very childish to me. Like the writing is very YA to me. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, she writes about these 30 year old characters that sound like they're 16 and it's just annoying to me like it's just frustrating because I just can't ever connect with her characters because they just sound like children like oh why doesn't he like me oh it's very I, I don't even know I, I, I don't even know how to describe or explain my feelings but I just can't stand it. Every book has like these underlying romance themes and then it's just like these weird friendships and this is supposed to be like cozy horror. I, I just, I don't even see what is horror about it. I don't even see what's cozy about it. I just think it's annoying and childish. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said what I said, okay? But really the thing that made me mad about this book and just like about her writing in general is that she says like the dumbest things like the dumbest statements she said first of all ah uh, just two quotes off the top of my head oh her uncle was bloated like uh, after eating a thanksgiving dinner or something like that i was like oh stupid like just annoying little things like that and then um the thing that really got me <laughs> <laughs> the thing that really got me going was um, the colonoscopy thing. She said he walked with a stagger like he just had a colonoscopy. Okay, so I'm going to need everyone to attend class right now. I'm the professor. This is Meganology 101. Oh my god, these glasses are really um, <laughs> dirty. This is Meganology 101. I am the professor. Get out your notebooks, please, class. Everyone take a seat, okay? I am going to teach you how a colonoscopy gets performed, okay? Okay, there's a huge massive glare here. So how a colonoscopy gets performed, okay? I will have a diagram on the screen. Basically, a colonoscopy is a diagnostic um, test that you can tell uh, if someone has colon cancer or polyps or something going on with their colon, okay? So basically, they take a very long, thin, flexible tube with a camera on the end and they go up your anus, the anus is on the outside, they go up your rectum on the inside, damn near killed them, and then they go into your sigmoid colon, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, all around your large intestine, aka the colon, and they look and see what's going on, and you are asleep, okay? And then when you wake up from the anesthesia, you feel fine, and you go home, and you eat, and you're good, okay? No, this is like, um, she's basically implying that someone is ramming a telephone pole up your rectum. Why would someone be walking with a stagger after a colonoscopy? Does she not know what a colonoscopy is? Like, <laughs> that was, it was just like, I don't know why it grinded my gears so fucking bad, but it did. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, does she not know? Oh, listen, I just want everyone to know that they are not ramming a giant telephone pole up your asshole while you're sleeping okay at least i hope not i hope not but um yeah that's that i just don't understand the logic in that statement i i did piss me off so bad anyways i'm moving on <laughs> to my next two star book which was an extreme horror and it's bad vibrations by lucy littner uh this was in my vlog which i'll leave linked up above down below and this one it's not that I thought that this book was bad, it just really wasn't for me, that's all. Um, so we're following this woman, Valerie, and she's like obsessed with wellness, and there's this doctor on YouTube that has all these like wellness videos, and he does these wellness retreats. So her and a bunch of people go to this retreat, and they're all like energy, vibes, mm, organic kale, 
that sort of a situation and um, all craziness happens. It's full satire, it's full uh, sarcasm, which I love, but it was just a little bit too much for me, I guess. I don't know, I love the first half of this book and it took like this really weird turn in the second half that I wasn't really quite sure if I loved where the plot ended up going and the satire just kind of took over for me and I don't know, I just wasn't fully invested in what was going on. I think the writing was great, I would definitely read another book from her, but like this one just wasn't for me. But I would recommend this, like if you're looking for like a beginner's extreme horror book, if you like horror comedy, sarcasm, that sort of thing, I would maybe check this one out. Moving on to three star books, my first one was How to Find a Missing Girl by uh, Victoria Wallace. So this is a YA thriller. I had no idea that this was YA, which like you guys know I'm an idiot. I read that this is about like a teenage girl that goes missing and for some reason I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> so YA thrillers and YA books just in general really aren't typically my thing. But this is about this girl. Um, she is in high school and her older sister went missing a year ago and it, the case is cold, no one knows what happened, and now there's her ex-girlfriend who starts running a podcast investigating what happened to her sister, but now she is also missing. So now our main character, her and her friends have this like amateur sleuth group and they're trying to uncover the mystery of what happened to her sister and her ex-girlfriend now and how they're all connected. So. I mean, it was all right. It was decent. Um, I do think it was a little bit long. Like it was 400 pages and it didn't need to be. So I do think parts dragged. I do think the characters were really cringy YA characters in my opinion. So um, I just, I don't know. I don't know how I felt about it overall. I think it was okay. I think it's very, I wouldn't say very, it's similar to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Whereas this one does have a little bit of mixed media thrown in there, but A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is like mostly mixed media and I think that's the thing that really kept me engaged with those books. Um, whereas this one, it's like eh, some text messages here and there, that sort of thing, but it's mostly just straight like text from our main character and I don't know, her and her friends were just like a little bit cringy for me. I. I'm just not the biggest fan of this overall and I did end up guessing um, the twist at the end. I guess like half of what was happening. So it was okay. I mean I would recommend it like if you're someone that really wants to read a YA thriller go for it but I don't think it's anything that you need to be like pissing your pants about, you know? My next three star read was The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. This is about this woman who um, she's going through a divorce and so she moves back home and she stays at her uncle, I think it was her uncle, uh, yeah, her uncle's um, house, but he runs, like he lives in this museum of oddities. So it's like a tourist location. So she, uh, is watching his museum while he's away and her and the friend he's like I forget who he was so there's like this friend that's working there with her and helping her take care of the place and they discover that there's a hole in the drywall and this hole in the drywall leads them to other worlds and so it's very it's a Narnia situation okay so this book is kind of I wouldn't even classify it as true like horror. It was more like a fantasy, like horror fantasy. I don't know, um, but it takes them to these different worlds and all kinds of craziness happens. I really, really enjoy her writing. I really enjoy the main character. I love her female characters. Like they're just so sarcastic and funny and I just love them to pieces. Um, this isn't my favorite T. Kingfisher overall, but I did think that it was enjoyable and uh, I would recommend it. Like if you get scared easily and you wanna read a horror book, <laughs> I would recommend this one. It was entertaining and like I said I just absolutely love her characters and like her books actually make me laugh out loud. 
so that's a plus. Then my next three star is Camp Slasher Lake, which is a an extreme horror anthology um, dedicated to like 80s slasher movies. So this one, like I've said on this channel before, I pretty much give every single short story collection three stars because it's like there's stories I love, stories I didn't love, like it's very hard to rate them and it's like I think ratings are just kind of bullshit in general like I just slap ratings on things without any clear explanation as to why and so does everyone else like don't even lie don't even come for me and say oh but I have this like oh this so this, my rating system is so smart no it's not like everyone's just making shit up off their top of their head okay so anyways um I just think ratings are bullshit like just listen to what I have to say okay but anyways this uh, little anthology I thought it was fun it was very true to like every single story felt like an 80s slasher like a corny cheesy 80s slasher movie and like some of them had like weird supernatural things thrown in there like a corny cheesy 80s movie and um, so overall it was fun it was enjoyable like I said, some stories I didn't like as much. Um, no surprise, my two favorite stories were by PC3 and DW Hits. I really, really loved those. Overall, I would recommend it if you're just looking for that cheesy, corny 80s slasher situation. Am I making sense? Um, is it a video if I don't question if I'm making sense? No, it's not. So that's that one. I don't even know if I'm explaining things properly. Then my next three star was Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. You guys were freaking out for me to read this book. Everyone was up in arms about this on my TBR video. Like, oh, I love that book. Oh, I hated that book. Oh, I can't wait for you to read that book. Here's my review, okay? I am an idiot and I knew what was going on this entire time. Do I remember what that was? No, I don't. I don't remember what was I I honestly am sitting here and I don't even remember what happened in this book all I knew was that I knew what was happening now there's a fucking guy out there with a weed whacker you've got to be fucking kidding me like I already hate filming wrap-ups because they're just long and annoying to get through and then when I have to sit here and listen to that I'm just <sighs> anyways Okay, I don't even care. Hopefully you can't hear that. I just kind of checked the video footage. It seems okay. I don't know, but basically this is about a woman who finds out that her husband is a serial killer. And so now her and her kids, like he gets arrested and now her and her kids move to this cabin that's kind of in this secluded area um, by this stillhouse lake. And they're kind of, you know, starting all over. They have different names and they're just trying to start a new life where people can't find them because she's getting these like messages from trolls online. And she thinks that these trolls might be connected to the murders or have some kind of ties to her husband who is in prison. Um, so, you know, these things start getting progressive, progressively crazier? Did I just speak English? And now bodies are starting to pop up in the lake. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, I'll, overall, I do think the uh, person involved was extremely obvious. Like I knew exactly where this was going the entire time. I do think the writing was really great. Uh, it did suck me in and I was invested into what was going on, but it was just kind of tur uh, it was just kind of a turnoff for me like when I'm an idiot and I know what's going on and I'm correct and like there really wasn't anything else that was super mind-blowing to me so I went with, went with a three-star rating um, do I think I want to continue reading an entire series about this absolutely not I don't know let me know if the second book is worth picking up but it's kind of like what is the point <laughs> like what is the point of this being a series I have no idea, but like, it was okay. Literally just turned the camera on because I thought that we were done here and he's not done. No, why would he be done? He's trying to ruin my life. Um, 
I have a bunch of four star reads. My first one was Dino Gore by Otis Bateman. This is about a kid who finds a crate in an abandoned house that contains a dinosaur. And when he opens it, the dinosaur breaks loose and starts chomping on kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's extreme horror, but it's not like super, super, super crazy extreme horror. Like if you are a beginner, I would probably recommend this. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Once again, it reminds me of just like a corny, like dinosaur horror movie, but like in a good way. Like I mean that in a good way. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was crazy and I would highly recommend it. I love Otis Bateman. He's my bestie. And, um, I just I can't wait to read all of his books because they all just I don't know they keep me guessing like they're fun they're gross and I love them okay then I read um, Larval Seeds by DW Hits this is another one that was in my vlog with Dino Gore and with um, Bad Vibrations so this one is about this kid whose mom uh, sleeps with this man and afterwards a bunch of craziness is happening involving like bugs. If you are afraid of bugs like I am this is going to gross the shit out of you. <laughs> it's like Loki traumatized me a little bit. I don't like bugs okay. Um, lots of things to do involving maggots and craziness okay it's it's man versus bug it's a lot of body horror it's just straight extreme horror body horror the entire time so if that's what you're looking for definitely check this out um i do wish we got a little bit more of like the backstory of this guy because that's just me like i like when things are wrapped up in my brain but that was like the only thing that i have wrong with it i think his writing is just like really really well done so I can't wait to read more from DW Hits. Then my next four star read was What Good Men Do by Jonathan Butcher. This was also in my extreme horror vlog this month and this is the sequel to What Good Girls Do which I just absolutely loved and we're following this girl who in What Good Girls Do we're following this girl who's been basically locked up her entire uh, life, her entire childhood. She doesn't really know anything because she's been held captive and abused by this man or multiple men. And she doesn't know anything other than like sex terms, like just really badly abused her entire life. And then one day she gets out. So now this is the sequel. So we're still following some of those um, characters from the first book. I don't want to spoil anything. And then we're following some new ones as well. There's multiple POVs involved. And that was like the one thing that I didn't like about this book was that there were so many POVs and I was kind of getting confused <laughs> as to who was who, but that's just personal preference. I do think Jonathan Butcher's writing is absolutely stunning. I would love to read more from him. And I just overall really love this series. Is it going to be a series? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed it just as much as the first one. And I would highly recommend both of them if you're looking for just like a disturbing extreme horror book. My next four star read is Pines by Blake Crouch. This is the first book in the um, trilogy, the Wayward Pines trilogy. This is a sci-fi thriller about this guy. He's a secret service agent and he wakes up and realizes that he was just knocked out unconscious <laughs> and when he wakes up everything is weird his wallet's missing his you know his id his phone everything is missing he doesn't remember quite where he is who he is what's going on so he's trying to piece that together and there's a hospital where the nurse is sketchy like the doctors are sketchy like there's not something that's not quite right so he's trying to piece together kind of what he's doing there and what is going on with all these weirdos <laughs> it's very sci-fi it gets this man with the weed whacker i can't i can't so he's trying to figure out what 
It's getting louder and louder. I'm yelling. I'm literally yelling over this man outside. I'm sorry, but like I don't have any other time to film this video, so I have to film it while the man is outside with the fucking goddamn fucking weed whacker. He's getting closer and closer with the weed whacker. He's outside my window. Like I was saying, he's trying to piece together why he's there. It gets very sci-fi, but it's easy to understand. And um, I am really looking forward to finishing that trilogy. It seems like a good one. Finally, he stopped. So moving into my... Well, okay, so... I read Christopher Triana's new book, Along the River of Flesh, okay? And at first I gave this four stars. The more I think about it, I'm going with a 4.5, okay? So this is the sequel to Gone to See the River Man, and absolutely love that book. It's a five star book for me. It was in my like best books I read in 2022. I think I was, I think it was 2022 that I read it. Whatever. Um, absolutely love that book and then um you know in that one we're following this woman Lori who's obsessed with this serial killer named Edmund and he is in prison and he tells her like hey if you want to be my number one groupie you're gonna have to go collect this key from this chest and then deliver it to this figure known as the river man so that's kind of what we're following in book one and I absolutely loved Lori because she was such a horrible toxic human being and so I think that's kind of what I missed from this book. No spoilers, but like we're following different characters in this book. And I didn't like the characters as much as her toxic ass. <laughs> so um, this is a very slow burn atmospheric book. The writing fucking phenomenal. The atmosphere was amazing. Like you feel like you're there. Every little thing is so described in a way where you can like feel yourself being there. It like hits all your senses. I don't know how to describe it. Um, so we're following some a couple different POVs. We're following a um, detective. We're following a private investigator and then this other girl that's like traveling to see this river man. So we're just kind of learning about the three of them and eventually like the three of them cross paths and I don't want to say anything else, but um, the writing was just phenomenal. Everything, this is just one of those books where it's like, I read it, I was like, okay, that's like a very solid book. I gave it four stars, but I can't stop thinking about it. And that's why I'm bumping it up to a 4.5 because I didn't like it as much as Gone to See the River Man, but I still like absolutely loved it. And his writing is just so fucking fantastic. And that's why I'm obsessed with him. Really, really solid read go check it out. It's not like super, super graphic. I mean, it's graphic. It's extreme horror, but um, it's just, it's just more of a slower burn, like a slower paced book, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm not making sense. I feel like I'm so flustered over the weed whacking man that <laughs> I just don't even know what I'm saying. All right, moving into five star reads. Obviously, I have Violence on the Meek 2 by Stuart Bray. This one, we're following this um, serial killer named Lucas, and he is basically on this mission to find this Catholic priest after a situation that happened with his brother when they were younger. So it's very similar to the original Violence on the Meek, where it's just like straight violence, depravity, just insane shit happening with this main character. He's an evil man and he's just horrific. Um, so I just overall think that it was really well done. Uh, lots of, you know, extreme horror-ness and crazy brutality, but it was also funny at the same time, which is kind of hard to nail, um, but I think he nailed it. And also, McKay and I are in this book, and we are twins in the book, <laughs> and it was hilarious. Just some of the things that happened, I was just cracking up to the point where I couldn't breathe. I highly recommend this book. I have an entire video talking about it, as well as the next one, which is Broken Dolls by McKay Watson. And um, both of these I have in, in their own separate video together. But Broken Dolls is a super, super extreme horror book where we are following this woman who lives alone with her daughter 
and is very weary of men until one day there's a knock at the door and this man makes his way into the home. It's a home invasion horror, very similar to like the movie Funny Games. Um, and the things that happened after that, I'm not going to say anything else. It's super graphic. It's super extreme. Definitely check trigger warnings. Um, and a lot of people already, it's getting mixed reviews. Like it's either you love it or you hate it. I feel like, you know, I told him, I was like, not everyone is going to understand this book or this book is just not going to be for everyone where I feel like them is much more loved um, overall in the extreme horror community, but I think this one is a little bit too extreme, I guess. Like a lot of people are going to say, oh, it didn't have any this or it didn't have any that, but I genuinely loved it because I felt horrified. I felt fearful, upset. I was sweating at 1 a.m. And it's like, uh, when a book can make me feel all those emotions and hit those different things for me, I absolutely love it and it's a five star read for me. So yeah, some people might classify this as torture porn, but it really genuinely horrified me and I'm sorry, but that's what I look for in an extreme horror book. I'm sorry, but if a book genuinely terrifies me and horrifies me, it takes me out of my own feelings and my own problems and puts me into someone else's fictional. So this book helped me escape from my real life demons and shit. And so I, I really don't know what else to say. Um, like I said, there's an entire video on both of these where I go more in depth, but um, absolutely, absolutely loved it. Then, last but not least, is my nonfiction, which is Bleed, Destroying Myths and Misogyny in Endometriosis Care by Tracy Lindman. This is obviously a nonfiction book. It's mostly about women's health care and like women's health issues. And yes, it does specifically focus on endometriosis and have super accurate endometriosis representation. Um, but it also just kind of looks at women's health care in general. So I would highly recommend this. First of all, I feel like every freaking person in the world needs to read this book, but I know you're not going to. So specifically, if you have a condition that primarily affects women, um, I would definitely, definitely give this a read, whether it's endometriosis, PCOS, literally anything. Anything that primarily affects women, definitely check this out because it goes over so much detail and depth and um, statistics as far as why women's healthcare is so bad and why gynecologists never know what the hell they're talking about unless it's delivering babies and why like specifically like women of color or anyone who's not white has a harder time finding care being believed, getting diagnosed, and it goes into the why, it goes into the history of those things, and I just felt like it was just infuriating, first of all, and second of all, just extremely eye-opening, and I, I don't know, it's upsetting, but it's so, I don't know, like I said, it's just so eye-opening, learning about all these things, and like I already knew that healthcare is like this. I mean, it took me, what, 15 freaking years to get a diagnosis, um, and just why doctors don't believe you, and how OBGYNs don't get paid as much, and like, you can biopsy a vagina, biopsy a penis, and you get paid 40% more for the penis biopsy, so like, doctors only go into becoming an OBGYN if they want to deliver babies most of the time, not all the time. But you see what I mean? It's just kind of like the inequality of things and how it trickles down and affects us as patients. And it's just super, super, uh, I could just rant and rave about this all day. Like it's just infuriating. <laughs> it's really, really infuriating. So I feel like realistically everyone needs to read this book and learn about our healthcare system and learn about endometriosis and you know why I need to travel to another freaking state across the country to get you know a million dollar surgery because it's not covered under insurance so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can read this book and learn all those little things and it just makes you so Furious, fur, furious, furious. Oh my gosh, I'm brain dead. Um, you know, you guys know what I'm trying to say. 
definitely eye-opening into how messed up our healthcare system is especially America is just a mess. It's like, give us all your money and like, we're not gonna do anything for you. So yeah, definitely, definitely check this out. Um, very thought provoking read. So yeah, those were all the books that I read in July. Uh, let me know what your favorite book you read in July was and I will see you in my next video. Bye.